Uh-oh. How you doing, Brian? I'm doing all right. How are you, Cody? I'm doing, doing pretty good. I'm all guessing right. the signal's kind of weak. I don't know what's going on, man. I got Verizon 4G, so I was hoping that would work. Yeah, it looks pretty good on this end. All right. Well, we'll just ride it out till something happens. All right. How long have you been into the comic book game? Ah, oh, shit, man. I started... <laughs> I started doing artwork again, uh, like in 2013, and then around probably officially getting comic book work was last year, 2019. But in 2015, I started doing sketch cards for Marvel, so that's kind of comic book, and I was doing fan art, but like legitimate comic book work was 2019. All right. Tell us some about some of your earlier work. I don't know what that means, but I did. So when I was doing artwork in 2013, I was doing like t-shirt designs Mm -hmm. and uh, it was mostly just graphic work. And then I started going to these conventions where I saw people selling fan art and I was like, well, shit, I can draw better than those guys. So why am I coming here to pay to be at the show? while other people are selling their stuff. So I talked to a couple of guys and they were like, all you have to do is pay your table fee. And the conventions generally don't care who's there as long as you paid to be there. So I was like, all right, cool. So what I did was I took some of my t-shirt designs and I made them into prints, even though it's not what they were designed to do. And then I started trying to sell those and it just, snowballed from doing Deadpool art to wanting to create your own characters. So, and all to the evolution of where we sit now, which is with Loggerhead. All right. When did you first realize that you was an artist? Was it back in grade school? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. I know I was young. Well, let's, let me preface this with I'm old, so I'm probably going to forget some shit, but (laughs) so I was a kid I was told I could draw. Now, when I started to believe about drawing was in high school when I started collecting comic books. And uh, I started trying to copy the pictures of the Todd McFarlane Spider-Man, the Eric Larson Spider-Man, the Jim Lee and Mark Silvestri Wolverine. Like, I was trying to copy all that stuff, and I was a pretty good copier. And that's when people were like, oh, man, you can draw. And then my dumb ass, like, when I... I, uh, I tried to turn it into like, ooh, I've got a crush on this girl. So let me draw a picture of a butterfly on top of a rose and give it to her. She'll be my girlfriend. And that (laughs) shit, it never worked out. But they were like, oh, that's nice, Brian. Thank you. (laughs) But So that's when I tried. It didn't work. So in 1995, I was like, all right, let's go join the Army. All right. Well, thank you for your service. I didn't know you joined the Army. Yeah, buddy. Seven years or six years. Wow, thank you. Um, can you tell us a time that a piece of art challenged you? <laughs> Anytime there's a female on the piece of art. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's not me. Like, I know that there's a lot of stuff that I don't draw well, and then there's even more stuff that I just can't draw. So women fall into the category of stuff that I'm not super comfortable with. I can draw women, but it'll take me like five times as long to draw a woman as it was to be drawing a dude. Like you don't have to be as delicate and precise and as it doesn't have to look as good to be a dude. But if you draw a woman and you got some scratchy lines, that shit just looks whack and (laughs) nobody. So for me right now, I have to brush up on my, on my woman anatomy and drawing the female figure. So anytime that I'm asked to do that is people don't understand, like you're getting, I'm putting twice as much work into drawing this female for you as if you had said, let's draw a Deadpool or let's draw loggerhead or whatever. Like, but I'm having, I'm having to catch up so that I'm not, so that it's a little bit closer in quality. Like I'll always probably be better at drawing dudes and creatures than females, but there's such a big gap there that I need to need to close the gap a little bit. All right. What's your favorite character to draw? Uh, Loggerhead. That's the right answer. 
<laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, honestly, honestly, I'm, loggerhead combines a lot of things that uh, that I enjoy drawing, which is like creature type stuff where you can like mess with the anatomy. The anatomy. No one knows what a ten foot tall turtle man looks like, so you can fudge the anatomy and make stuff up and just kind of make it look cool. So I have that ability, and he's a big, strong, powerful, you know, Hulk looking guy. So drawing big stuff like that, and I also really like drawing, you know, by hand on, on the piece of paper and then taking it into the digital world where I can use my blood splatter, blood splatter brushes mm -hmm. and doing loggerhead work allows me to do both of those things. All right. When, when is loggerhead available? It's going to be May 2020, 2020. Okay. So May it'll be on comic book shelves and next month in March it'll be able to, you can order it for a uh, previews diamond catalog mm -hmm. so that you're, you, you can tell your store to get you a copy. Okay. All right, guys, you hear that? Get you, pick you up a copy of Loggerhead. Uh, yeah, it's a one-shot story. This, this first one is a one-shot story called Bloody Bayou. So it's just 22 pages. It's, you get the whole thing. It's not a cliffhanger that's going to leave you waiting for another month or another six months. Like, this is me testing the water to see if I've created a product that anybody gives a shit about. So if you like it, if people like it, then, Hey, maybe I'll do more with it. If people don't respond to the comic book, then I'll be like, Oh, maybe I guess writing comic books isn't my thing. Cause I wrote it as well as drew it. All right. Wow. Uh, what other projects you have coming out that you could tell us about? Uh, dude, I'm doing, I'm getting a lot of cover work. So I'm doing some co uh, comic book covers for the Bobcat series, which is published through Caliber Comics. And I'm doing some Kickstarter comic book covers. Uh, some Kickstarter, different Kickstarters have reached out and asked us stuff. I did a, a Dust County Chronicles cover, which uh, Joel, you probably will talk to him at some point. He, he just got a job at Scout. Um, and I'm doing a I'm doing a, a cover for Stoned Ninja. I don't know if you heard about that, but it's like a, a weed smoking ninja or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. But so the 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 what's going to keep me afloat is getting the new cover work that I'm working on, mm -hmm. and then that will help me pay the bills to get the next issue of Loggerhead out there ready for you guys. But I'm oh, and I'm also doing uh, sketch cards for. Uh, uh, my set for Marvel masterpieces for the next set of Marvel cards. All right. Are you taking any cover consultations right now? I don't know what cover consultations mean. Am I taking on, like, am I taking more work? Yeah. Like, I think, I think that's what they call it. Like when you get a blank cover and somebody sends oh, it to you. Commission. You do... commission. Yeah, commission. Sorry. Uh, I, not this week because I've got one that somebody asked me yesterday to do a, a sketch cover and it's pretty involved. It's got like six characters on it and he needs it by Valentine's day, Ooh. which is next Friday. Right. I don't know when this year, but it, it's it, whenever Valentine's day is, he's given me one week to get it done, but because of the tight deadline and the amount of work he wants done, I shot him a number. I was like, dude, $150 is what it's going to take for me to draw this for you. And he's like, no problem. I was like, oh, shit, man. I thought that was going to be too big a number for him to stick around. Right. Made it. And so now I got to. So this week I have to finish two covers and um, that sketch cover. But sketch covers, you're always welcome to send them to me as long as you don't need it back immediately. But I also have a, a short box here of just blank covers that I keep on hand. Most of them are Marvel, but. I have a nice short box and you can just do that. And I can do those through the mail and whatever. All right. My $40 is generally the cheap $40 is the cheap headshot that I do. But here lately I've been doing, uh, I've been doing auctions on my Facebook page to where I just draw a sketch cover and then just put it up for auction for $1. And then people will bid however much they like. Right. Cause we definitely need a Brian Silverback covering our set back here yeah you don't have the ball 
the mall. And when you came to the store in in Florida, yeah, and, I, and the copy of the mall. Put, I haven't put it up there yet. Oh well, shit, man, you're slacking. I know it. All right, let's get back into the questions. Uh, I know right. you was in the movie Undercover Brother Two. Can you tell us about the experience? Oh, Can you tell us about the experience on the set? Uh, let's see. That honestly, I've I've been on several sets, but I'm just a background. Like I'm a background guy, so whenever they need a henchman, a policeman, a prisoner, or a prison guard, that's generally the roles that I go out for. Undercover Brother Two was I was playing a henchman. So uh, it was a lot of fun. I got to see Mike. I got to meet Michael Jai White, which is the guy who played Undercover Brother in the second one. But he also played uh, Black Dynamite, mm-hmm. and he play, and he played all. Co- he was in The Dark Knight with Heath Ledger when he slammed the pencil down. Like, oh yeah, you get to see people like that. Like, I've been on the set, and uh, Jason Bateman was the director. Wow. While he's I, I not only is he an actor for this set because I'm in the new show Ozark or not Ozark, um, The Outsider, and that's Jason Bateman production, and I was on that set for probably a total of ten to fifteen days. I was on set for that one, but one of the coolest times I ever had was when I was on The Walking Dead, and they got to put makeup on the side of my head to make it look like my ear had been blown off. Wow, that's pretty cool. Because I was one of Negan's guys. So not only was that a cool part, but that whole week that I was there, uh, you're just walking around. Like everybody's, like all the cast members, or everyone's just kind of like out doing things. And you're like, wow, I just watched you on TV last week. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know you was on The Walking Dead. That's that's pretty yeah, interesting. I was, in the, I was in the last two episodes of season eight. All right, I'm about to check that out. Uh, but you can really see me in the very last episode when, when, if you ever, anyone that watches The Walking Dead, when all the guns backfire because Eugene messed up the bullets, hmm. I'm one of the people that, that the M16 blow, like they, they tight on my face and they watch the M16 blow up. It's real quick, but the whole side of my face blows off. Oh, wow. Um, uh, who is, who is a uh, professional artist you want to work with or you would like to work with in the future? Anybody. Anybody. <laughs> Anybody. Like, I, I mean, I'm just saying that that's the answer to the question. Anybody. Oh. Right. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think it's, it's, it's just so fun. I don't know how I – I don't want to work with one. I just want to, like, meet other artists that, are do, that have done things and just – sit down and be in there watch them work and stuff like i i i just want to learn i just i i want to learn and i want to be a peer to them as opposed to a guy that's just oh you don't know what you're talking about kid like (laughs) i want i want them to say you know what yeah come on i'd rather work with brian over here so that i just want to work to the level where my work and my business and the way i conduct myself put me on a plane that I can be seen as one of the guys as far as like the upper echelon of those guys goes. But that's the odds of that happening are pretty slim, but we'll keep trying. Right. Uh, Is there any comic books you're currently reading? Uh, Man, you want me to tell you a dirty truth? Yeah. (laughs) Dirty, dirty truth is I don't even read comic books anymore. Uh, I've, I don't, I don't. I buy comic books because I like art. I gotta fix and your I like, a little bit. I, I gotta go, fix it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh man, you just got the, like the bad section there. <laughs> yeah, it's got your mouth. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Boom. All right. So I don't read comic books anymore, but I buy a lot of comic books based on the art, and I, because I'm an artist, so I, I go for the stuff that looks cool and stuff that just strikes me but i don't really have much time for reading comic books because i'm too busy reading tutorials or uh reading how to market yourself like that's the only type stuff that i really read is how to uh breaking into comics writing for comics all this stuff that i need to i just need the information so i just don't spend the time to recreational read comics 
I know that's going to come across as disappointing, but mm-hmm. that's just the truth. What, what's your favorite variant cover you've done so far? Probably the one that started it all, man. Metal Shark Bro. All right. <laughs> Metal Shark Bro Volume 1. And I really, I really had a lot of fun with the Planet Caravan. Like, Stefano's work on Planet Caravan reminds me a lot of the old heavy metal magazine and reminds me a lot excuse me it reminds me a lot of uh, uh simon beasley mm-hmm. simon bisley like i really like that old lobo stuff that simon bisley was doing and stefano's style kind of sparks that same dopamine in my brain and so being able to do the cover for planet caravan and try to distance myself from how clean I like to draw and try to like pull back to kind of match. Like I'm not going to match his style, but messing mine up and being in the middle was kind of cool for me. All right. About how many variant covers you say you've done? Oh shit. Uh, (laughs) Public like, because see a lot of thing is I've done covers and they have not been published yet or they may never get published because they won't be used, but I've done, I I did the work, you know? Mm. So I, I think I've done like seven, I've done seven published scout variants. Uh, but I've probably actually done like 15 scout variants. And I did the one for midnight Vista for aftershock. And then I've done probably a, maybe like 10, diff, 10 or 15 different ones for like Kickstarters and independent comic books. All right. Do you have any advice for artists that wants to get into doing covers? Oh, shit. Uh, I think the best – the it's not just doing covers. Like any advice I can give to anybody trying to succeed, whether it's being a podcaster, whether it's being a YouTuber – whether it's being an artist or a writer, find someone like your goal can be here and you may be way down here, but find the person that's two steps above you and then figure out how they got there. And then once you're there, find a guy that's two steps above that and start figuring out how you can get there and just keep doing that and chipping away because no one's going to be overnight. Corey, uh, uh, Cody and his podcast are not going to be number one on YouTube overnight, but you've got to find the guy that's got 2000 likes on, on YouTube and figure out what do, what is he doing that I can also do? And then once you get to 2000, then you got to find the guy that's got like 10,000. How do I grow? Like, so instead of looking at this huge mountain of shit, you've got to learn and stuff you've got to do, just take it like just one level at a time. Like, I need to get where that guy's at. Boom, I'm there. Now I need to get to where that guy's at. Because if you look straight at the top of the mountain, you're going to overwhelm yourself and quit before you even get started. So that's my advice is to find somebody doing two steps better than you and learn how to do what they're doing. All right. What would you say the biggest challenge of being a comic book artist is? Finding paying work. <laughs> <laughs> right. Finding paying work. Everybody has a story. Everybody's got something they want done. And the fact that we're all creators means that nobody's nobody's and we're all eating ramen noodles. So at least I have a skill set to where I can trade. I, if you want to letter my comic book, I'll draw a cover for you because neither one of us have money. Uh, you want, I need this service from you. So what, Oh shit. I must've lost the question. What'd you say was the, what, what was the question again? Uh, what would you say the biggest, wait, uh, what, what would you say the biggest challenge of doing comic book? Oh, okay. Is? Yeah. I guess, mm-hmm. I guess finding paying work, like legitimately not, not a barter system, like, and just pay my price. Here it is. And the thing is I've got a very soft heart. Like I know what it's like to struggle. I know what it's like to not, I'm still doing that shit. So when someone says, man, I'd really like a cover from you. And then, but I've only got this amount of money. I'll be like, all right, well, how can I work with you? Cause I know that me doing this cover for you will increase, you know, whatever it is you're doing, it'll bring more eyeballs or whatever it's supposed to do. 
and I'll get a little bit of money out of it, but I want everybody to succeed. So personally, it's me having to say, no, I will not do your shit for free, but it, it's, it's, it's tough, man, because I want everybody to win. Right. Um, what's the most common mistake you see new artists making? Uh, posting their shit online when it sucks. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm trying not to be mean, but no, no, you be honest. That's what we want. Honest, the common mistake is, I, man, I don't know that there's one common mistake. I just, I wish people, the internet sucks, right? Cause let's say you can't draw very well and you post a picture online. I may drop an encouraging word. Hey, next time, you know, work on your anatomy for the forearm. But the next guy that posts could be like, you've got no business picking up a pencil. What the hell were you thinking? And then like you as the guy that posted that, you don't want to hear that mess. So where do you get constructive criticism? You go to the convention. Everybody's so busy that you, you, you feel like you're bothering them. And it's, man, I don't know. A common mistake is, oh, this is t this is a difficult. You should have sent me this shit early so I could have researched all these answers. <laughs> right, sorry. <laughs> no, but I, I think um, let's just start with the basics. Like, know the anatomy of the face, Ge like the general rules for where stuff goes. You know, you have an eye, an eye, and there's an eye in the middle. Like the distance in between the two eyes should be the same as one eye. Like that end eye should be in the middle of the head. The ears should be right on the eye line. Like just general rules will help everything kind of stay where they're supposed to be. Right. You can you can kind of stretch them, but I th I think people need to get the basics down. Start figure drawing before you start drawing Superman. Start learning how to just to draw a human body before you like. Ooh, shit! This human body looks good. Let's put this cape and this vest and this flak jacket, this mask on him. And now it looks all whack because the, the human being that you drew underneath wasn't correct before you threw all of his clothes and all of his gear on. Now he looks really whack. <laughs> so I think, I think make sure you have built that foundation, draw, draw, draw Spider-Man, but draw a human face and then put the mask on top of it and make sure the eyes are where the eyes would be. If you draw Spider-Man with eyes on the top of his head, but you drew Peter Parker's eyes right where they're supposed to be, there's no way you would have made that mistake. Right. You know, so I, I think, I think putting the cart before the horse, like slow down and get that basic shit out of the way, which is where I have to go with my females. I've got to stop trying to draw Domino. Stop trying to draw Scarlet Witch. Just draw a decent looking female and then dress it up as whoever you want it to be. And I get, and, and I know that's a flaw that I have as well. So just pull it back, slow down a little bit. All right. And about how long does it take you to do a cover? Uh, generally speaking, probably about two days. Like if that, but that's like with breaks and sleeping. If I wanted to, I could probably, I think I've done covers in 12 hours from starting from zero having it hand drawn and digitally colored and delivered to the customer. I've done like two or three with a 12 to 24 hour turnaround. But right. I mean, sometimes the grandkids come over and I've got shit to do, or I don't feel well, or there was other work that was here before your work was in. But my turnaround time is if I had to be very conservative, I'd say a week at the, la at the latest. All right. And just the final question, and we're going to do shout outs. What's, do you have any um, book signings coming up soon so like everybody can meet you? Or I wish I knew. I, I know my book, I know Loggerhead comes out in May, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure what weekend. So I don't know which, um, I don't know where to be like for the release. Do I go to this shop? So I'm going to, I'm going okay. to try to be somewhere different every weekend in May with the book, but. Uh, a big show that I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to be at Megacon in Orlando. I'm going to be at the Scout Comics booth and or 
uh, David Burns uh, a steak booth. I'm going to be there. For, and then uh, I'm going to be at Pensacon uh, at the end of the month. And I'll be there with the group called Magic City Con. Like I'll be at their table meeting people. So I won't be like in the traditional artist alley. Okay. And then I got, I'll be doing Dragon Con here in Atlanta. And that's Labor Day weekend. And then like two weeks later, I'll be doing a, I'll be doing a show with Richard Rivera up here in Cartersville. Yeah. We got him coming on next week. Yep. 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 So the, the, the one that we're doing in September, it's me, him, and I think it's supposed to be Donnie Cates and Mark Bagley. Like that's a pretty packed. We're doing a spe- we're doing a special cover of Stabity Bunny for that one. Oh, nice! Might have to might have to get that. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be. I'm halfway through before this new work came in, but it doesn't need to be turned in until like July, so I got some time. <laughs> Can you give us a hint on the new cover? Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a Stabity Bunny. So. Right. It's going to be a Stabity Bunny cover. Uh, I told you two of the guests that are going to be there are going to be Mark Bagley and Donnie Cates. So right. Donnie Cates is famous for writing a book about a guy in a black suit that does things. And I think Mark Bagley drew that same character a long time ago when he was on Spider-Man back when this carnage fella came about. So it may be something to do with like lots of teeth and a big ass tongue and a rabbit. I'm not sure. All right. That sounds interesting. Do you got any shout outs and where can people find you? Uh, I don't, uh, people can find me just a uh, social media type in B R Y A N and then the word silver and then B A X. So you can type that into Instagram or Facebook or Twitter and all that stuff. And I should pop up, but I got T-shirts. I got prints that I sell, comic books that I sell. So pretty much if you you wanted to know more about me or keep up with it, because I post pretty regularly on my Facebook and Instagram, that's generally how I do it. I don't know that I have any shout outs. Who would I, who who do normally people shout out? Shout out to the 404. Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, people usually yeah. shout out their wives or their upcoming book. We talked about Loggerhead. Y'all yeah, check I, it. I think I cover that in organically. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I'm going to give a shout out to Killer Finds in yeah. Hiram, Georgia, because I got myself a Hulk 180 this week from Killer All right. Finds. All right. So now we're going to get it pressed and clean and see what that baby comes back as. Right. Well, I wish you the best of luck with that. Stay in the Thank uh, you, interview. Thank you for coming on, Silverbacks. Thanks, well, man. Silverbacks. Good. I keep saying it with an S. <laughs> no, it's just regular Silverbacks. I know. Backs. It right. should have an S, but if it was spelled with a, a C-K-S, but I've just taken all three of those letters and just made it an X. Right. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. All right. Stay creative. All right. <laughs>